Decluttering is a real buzzword these days, but it's not a fad, it's a trend, it's here to stay. And the reason decluttering is so important is because the more clutter that's in a space, the harder it is to clean and also the harder it is to feel good in the space. So this is actually our seventh 10 things to toss video. We've done so well with the other ones. And when I say that, I mean, you guys love these videos. You respond so well to them. And that's why we keep doing them because they really do help you guys get rid of your stuff that you don't need. So in this video, we're gonna be focusing on a space that definitely has clutter that needs to be dealt with the bedroom. And just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already to subscribe to the Clean My Space channel, you give this video a thumbs up if your bedroom needs a little bit of decluttering. Ever since getting the pregnant, I haven't really been sleeping the same. So my regular pillows aren't serving me the way that I've needed them to. So I've upgraded to this crazy snake of a pregnancy pillow, which literally takes up the whole bed. So the other pillows have had to come off of my bed, but they are still great. So I'm gonna keep those guys until after I have the baby. However, if you have old pillows kicking around and you think, you know what? I'm definitely gonna need that one day when I go on that camping trip or when those guests come by and you start stacking up and storing pillows for that particular reason, you're hanging on to things that you don't really need. In my opinion, when a pillow has outlived its usefulness, you need to get rid of it, not save it for guests. You don't wanna give your guests an uncomfortable pillow anyway, do you? I didn't think so. This is Chad's box o socks. Now he has a box, I have a drawer. But in either iteration, there are definitely socks that don't belong. Either they didn't get picked up at the singles dance, that's kind of my funny way of saying they're single, or they have holes in them and they're kind of not useful anymore. So what you need to do is sort through your socks, even the ones that you have bunched up, because I know we're all in denial sometimes, we bunch up socks with holes in them and we think, oh, I can get another use out of them. But really, like socks with holes in them, they're not fun to wear, so we need to get rid of them. So sort through all your socks, unbunch them, rebunch them, look through all the singles, and anything that has holes in it or it doesn't have a partner, it needs to go in a separate pile. Now, for the socks with holes in them that are really bad, those ones you can actually get rid of, for the ones with small holes in them or fading at the bottom, there are definite second uses for it, and same goes for the single socks. And in fact, we are so passionate about this very topic that I put a video together not too long ago about different things that you can do with single socks. So I'll link that for you down below. Now here's something I think a lot of us ladies can admit to. We probably have jewelry that we don't wear anymore, whether it's broken and tangled like this bracelet that used to have a crystal in it that fell out and then got tangled to this thing that just decolored decolored, you guys know what I mean, discolored over the years that I kind of just stopped wearing but held on to because I paid $40 for it. And then this thing, which I think in theory is nice, but I never actually pick it when I'm getting dressed. So we all kind of have this jewelry that lies around and takes up space, but that we never actually use. And the truth is, I know that there are lots of people in my life who would be interested in something like this. Now something like this that's discolored, perhaps it could be cleaned and some new life could be breathed into it. And for the broken thing, frankly, I think I should just look to get some money for it. There are lots of different things you can do with jewelry if you don't want it anymore. You can find someone else who might really love it. You can donate it to a secondhand shop or if it's something that's precious or semi-precious, you can take it to a jeweler and see what kind of cash you can get for it. Either way, get rid of the jewelry you don't wear anymore and clear up space. If you guys have any shoes where you bought them maybe because they were on sale or you really liked them but they weren't quite your size or you accidentally purchased them or even if you have shoes that you wear but you don't think you're gonna wear again or that frequently or you kind of like them but you never quite pick them to go with an outfit it's probably a really good sign that it's time to get rid of those shoes so take a good honest look at the shoes that you have in your closet whether they're new or worn and ask yourself, would these be the shoes that I would pick if I were wearing a certain outfit? And if you would pick another pair of shoes instead of those ones, it's time to move on from those shoes. The nightstand junk drawer is a commonly found species in pretty much every bedroom in 
pretty much the entire world. We all have that one drawer where we put things that we think we're gonna need directly beside our bed. But frankly, the majority of stuff that's in there, we don't need directly beside our bed. We go through ours a couple times a year because things just end up there. But you know what? The cleaner it is, the easier it is to find things. And when you don't have the mentality of a junk drawer, funny enough, junk doesn't actually end up in there. So I'd actually love to know in the comments, how many junk drawers do you guys have in your homes? I have the best of intentions when it comes to reading before bed, and that's why I have a few of my favorite magazines lying around, as well as books on my night side table. Now, every now and then I'll come across a book or a magazine, pick it up and think, oh, I'm totally gonna read that, and I never do. But it just sits there because one day, that infamous one day, I'll get to it, but I kind of never do. So I don't know if you guys go through the same thing, but if you do, the idea here is to move on from any of the books that you already have read, unless of course it's a reference book, and then you can put it in a bookshelf, and any magazines that you've gotten to already or you're definitely not going to get to, put those in a pile. There are so many people who will gladly accept donated magazines. I give mine to my sister-in-laws whenever we see them at family events because they don't have to go out and buy magazines, they can just use the ones I have subscriptions to. Or you can remove your address if you have a subscription and you can donate it to a doctor's office or somewhere with a waiting room that you know is always in need of good reading material. You can take them into work, give them to colleagues, whatever it is, the same goes for books or if you have books that you no longer use, you can donate them to a library. Back when Chad used to have a job, I mean, you know, before he started working from home, I still cannot believe this, but this guy wore suits and ties every day, and this is the remnants of his tie collection. Now over the years, I mean, when we first started dating, I had to do a lot of work in Chad's tie collection, but he actually has pretty good taste, so over the years he's picked out some really nice ones. But Chad doesn't go to too many fancy occasions where he actually needs ties. So I think it's about time for him to go through his tie collection and pick out the ones that he knows he would never wear anymore. I mean, seriously? Stains are funny things. If we try to get rid of them and we can't get rid of them, we're kind of in denial. We're like, well, maybe one day I'll get rid of that stain or maybe somehow I'll figure out how to get rid of that pit stain or ring around the collar. So if you have those undershirts that are kind of stained that you're not really gonna wear and you would be horrified if anyone actually saw it in public, pick those shirts out and get rid of them. You can donate them or if you're too embarrassed to do that, you can even just cut them up and use them for one-time cleaning rags. I recommend cleaning out your closet twice a year. Once when the fall winter hits and once when the spring summer hits. When you do those change outs, you're gonna look through all of the clothes from the past season and you'll see the stuff that you haven't worn or that you don't really like anymore and you can sort of put that in a pile and move away from it. Doing this closet clean out twice a year is super helpful and it helps you get rid of that stuff. But if you haven't done that in a while, it might be a really good time for you to take a long, hard look at the clothes you have in your closet Decide anything that you haven't worn in the last 12 months, get rid of that, put it in a donation pile, and move on from it. I recently did that in my closet. I was doing my biannual closet changeover, but I was also getting rid of stuff that wasn't gonna fit me anymore, not at least while I was pregnant, and I put that in a box. And it freed up so much space in my closet. So now when I go in there to get dressed, I can actually just pick from things that fit me well and that I like. And that is the best part about getting dressed in the morning. While you're in your closet, you can have a look and see if you have any old, broken, mismatched, or wire hangers that aren't serving a purpose for you anymore. A few years back when Chad and I did our initial closet cleaning video, we got rid of all of the mismatched hangers and we moved on to wood hangers. Now every now and then we do find a plastic hanger or a mismatched hanger circulating through and we'll just prune it out. However, once we did that, we noticed our closet just looks so much nicer and more uniformed. And if you are somebody who gets your stuff dry cleaned, you probably have a lot of those wire hangers. And yes, it's a free hanger, but it's so annoying to actually work with. I find clothes slip off of them all the time. 
And those aren't meant to be actual hangers in your closet. That's a temporary solution for something that needs to be hung up so it doesn't get wrinkled. And that brings me to this week's comment question, which is, what is the thing that's clogging up your bedroom? What's the thing you're most excited to toss? Let me know in the comments down below. When you see this video, I'll be 20 weeks pregnant and so many of you have sent Chad and I the nicest messages, whether it's here on YouTube or on our Instagram accounts or even sending us emails. And I just want you guys to know, although we can't get back to all of them, we appreciate your kind thoughts and your words so, so much. A lot of the pregnancy stuff that I talk about is up on my own YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Melissa Maker. I'll link that for you down below. And yes, our gender reveal video is up so you can know who's floating around in here. And I'm also sharing a lot of stuff on my Instagram account, which is at Melissa Maker. And Chad's got some stuff up on his as well. And he is at the Chad Reynolds. Here are a couple of other videos I think you're going to love. And if you want to learn more about cleaning, you can visit our website. It's cleanmyspace.com. There's a button down there that lets me know you care. So click it if you liked this video and click this button right here to subscribe and begin your journey to a cleaner life. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.